Have any of you guys ever been to a foreign country that you didn't speak the language in? Yeah, we all have been at some point, or some of us have been at some point in time. So I'm background, I'm Canadian French, 50% Canadian French. My father's family is all French. They're French to, all the way back to the French Revolution and beyond. Matter of fact, we had to leave, my ancestors had to leave France because we were selling, sending, uh, creating pamphlets to overthrow the monarchy. So we left, three brothers, they come to the United States. So we are Canadian French, we come from that background. Everyone in my family speaks French. We have a large family because they're Roman Catholic, Canadian French people. My father had 18 kids in his family that lived. They all had five to six kids, each large family. Me, my brother, and my sister are the only ones in our entire family that don't speak French. So I took five years of French in, in, in high school, and I sucked at it. <laughs> I was awful. I couldn't speak French at all. Um, I could just read it a little bit. I could understand it when other people would speak if they spoke really slow and loud. I could understand it. So we used to go to Canada all the time, and I always had relatives with, that were with me that could speak French fluently. So I was always in a great shape. So I get married. This is in the 80s. You know, French classes have long gone out of my mind. I remember a few key words like bonjour, you know. And uh, so we go to Canada. And I'm on my way to Canada. My wife is with me. And I start hearing people talk. And I, I start recognizing words. I'm reading signs. I say, oh, yeah, that's what that means, right? And I'm getting that kind of really kind of cool cultural thing. There's no one, you know, French with us to help translate. So I decide to go into McDonald's and order my order in French. Big mistake. I said bonjour. The next thing is the woman starts speaking at me a thousand miles an hour. I shut down. Now, those people that know me, I never have I'm at a loss for words. I had no idea what to say. I looked like a deer in the headlights. So what we have to do is we have to learn a new language. So when business comes to us and they have a need, that they don't look like a deer in the headlights. And we start speaking. So that's part of our challenge. So we need to learn a new language. The second thing that we need to le le uh, learn is that it's our job to meet the business. We have to go out and in initiate the conversations with business. IT is responsible for doing that. If you're not at the table, it's because you haven't brought yourself to the table. And we have to engage that. We have to make that happen. So we have to change our mindset. And some organizations, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to see, have started to make that transition. Some of the people in the room that I've talked to are really going out of their way to engaging the business in conversations about how they can move the business forward. Now, some of us were forced to do that. The last three years, last four years of the economy has forced us to do things radically different. Some of us are doing it because it's a proactive measure. We know we need to move in that, that fashion. So we need to do things like that. As we continue down this path, the other thing we have to look at is how do we get more time? More time, more energy, and more resources. Because we said IT is hard. It's harder today because it's changing faster. There's more demand. Com it's more integrated. Everything is connected together. So all those things are happening. But there's a couple other factors that happen and make it more complicated. How many people's staff today in your organization is larger today than it was three years ago? Anyone? So there's a couple of people in this room, probably less than 2% of the people in this room have a larger organization today than they did three years ago. Headcount is going down. We're not expanding it. Money that's coming into IT for IT purposes is being reduced. It's harder to do what we need to do because we have less resources. So we have to go to business. So we talk about fusion being important. How do you know if you're a fused organization or not? How would you measure fusion? When we use the, the Patriots analogy, I can come in at any time in a game. I can miss the first quarter, and I know exactly where we are. Because there's a scoreboard, right? And you look out here in Gillette Stadium when you have your break, you can see the scoreboard out there, and it has a score. It tells you what quarter, how many seconds we have left, how many timeouts, what the score is. We can determine if we're winning or losing. How do we measure that in IT? How do you know if you even have to make a change? What if you're already fused and everything is perfect? How would you know? What are the, even the things that you would look at to measure? So we have fundamentally, we spent this time, we spent, as most of the people in this room know, we spent the last couple of years interviewing people in this room, understanding how you think about IT, what your challenges are, how you're looking to overcome those challenges, how your budgets are structured, how, how you get together to make IT-based decisions. We spent a lot of time researching that. 
we've read hundreds and thousands of articles on IT from Gartner to Infotech, on and on and on, all their ideas on how to do this. We've read dozens of books on the topic. And from that information, we believe that there's two fundamental dimensions that you have to, have to look at to determine if you're a fused organization or not. 